Greetings my brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Today my topic is tested but not shaken. My brothers and sisters, we all would have experienced the different experiences of failure, discouragement, disappointment and disasters. You know how if you look behind and look past are the, all these events which happened in our life and if we just think for a moment and reflect back and see how we overcome all those challenges, how did we do it? For some, if they say they might talk about bravery, but for some, they would rest everything in the word of God. But from my own experience, I have kept several times all the failures which occurred in my life and how I transitioned to the present times is purely by the protection, the guidance of the scriptures. The holy word of, word of God is alive and active. So when we rest on the holy word of God, we are resting in Jesus, the creator God whose breath is within us. We need to acknowledge that and we need to claim that. Today, let us see how people in the past have been tested but not shaken. Likewise, how we can read from scriptures from those experiences and how we can strengthen our own lives during all the challenges that will come in our life's journey. Now, God wants us to be stable and not to get lost in this confusion, in this commotion of this world's various challenges. So we need to rely on the word of God. The basic instructions before leaving the earth, the Bible. This is what we need to follow. Let's look at some of the Psalms and there we find how the words of God can strengthen us at times of the most difficult moments. Psalm 62 and verse 2 and 6 He is my rock and my salvation He is my defense I shall not be oppressed My God is my rock and my salvation He is my defense When we have these words implanted in our minds, in our hearts in our actions then we will never feel lost nor during times of difficulty shaken. We would face those challenges believing that God is the rock we are grounded on and through the sufferings he will get us victory. So any kind of tests, temptations which come our way we will not be shaken. And that's what Jesus said. You will be tested because Jesus was tested. You will be tempted because Jesus was, was tempted. So when Jesus himself, who is God in his divine nature, when he was tested by the evil one, we can imagine the spiritual power of this evil spirit because it's a fallen angel. So it's got that power. It, but it got that most anti-Christ quality, which is pride. Let's look at another psalm. Psalm 16 verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is my right hand. I shall not be moved. Psalm 16 and 8. We saw earlier Psalm 62 verse 2 and 6. Here we are seeing Psalm 16 and 8. Very easy to remember. These words should get implanted in our minds. So during the time of trouble, during the time of grief, during our testing times, we need to remember this. Psalm 16 verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Imagine if your right hand is strong, like a physical, if a child wants to move it, if a little child wants to move your right hand, if you hold it very firm 
and the little child cannot move it. See, all the evil power put together is much, much smaller than a little child in front of the arms of our Lord Jesus Christ. When our Lord Jesus Christ is the arm, he is the right arm. And all these powers, which all these powers which put us to test, they can try to swing in our arm, but they can do nothing. It can hardly move them. And this is what the psalmist says. I've set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. You have the Lord himself before you. Then what test can disrupt you? Nothing. Now Psalm 125 verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall not, shall be like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abide forever. My brothers and sisters, Mount Zion, it existed those times. It's present now. Nobody can move it. So, if we trust in the Lord, all the tests, the temptations, the tribulations which come our way in this earthly journey cannot disrupt us, cannot disturb us. We need to believe in that. We need to trust in that. Once we have the trust built in our Creator God, in our Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot be moved. We will remain like Mount Zion. What may come? Let's look at one more psalm. Psalm 55 verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So whatever burden we have, whatever we have, the problems, the tests, the trials, the temptations, the tribulations, we have to cast all those burdens, physical, social, emotional, psychological, financial, every burden on him. Cast all that burden on me and I will sustain it. And I will never let you suffer the righteous to be moved. But for this, for, for we need to cast all our burdens on our Lord, we need to follow his laws and commandments, his laws of love, his laws of loving God Almighty Father and our fellow human beings who are made in the image and likeness of him. As long as we do that, we can cast all our burdens on him and he will sustain that and he will never let us fall. Now Proverbs chapter 12 verse 3 A man shall not be established by wickedness but the root of righteous shall not be bought. See a wicked man what we see even in our present times we see that all the wicked people are becoming richer and richer. The thieves are becoming greater and greater. But it is the physical world. We need to really look at the spiritual world. So when we look at the spiritual world, the righteous people, they will never die. They will be immortal. They will live with the Lord forever. And that's the spiritual life. So the root of righteousness shall never be moved. So if you are righteous, nobody can do anything to your soul. Your soul will be with our Lord. Let's look at Luke chapter 21 verse 19. Stand firm and you will win life. If we are standing firm in, in the front of in the eyes of God, obeying his laws and commandments, then we will have life. We will never lose it. Now Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27. This is that good story of the wise man building his house on a rock. The winds came, the storms came, nothing could disrupt this house built on rock. But the foolish man, he built his house on sand. There is no depth, no ground, no foundation, no strong foundation, nothing to cling to. When the storms came, when the floods came, when the wind blew, his house collapsed 
disastrously because it was not founded. So Jesus tells his apostles, his disciples of that time and also us in the present time that if we have to build our faith, we have to build the faith on him. Then it will be like the wise man building the house on the rock while the not like the foolish man who is building it on sand. My brothers and sisters, whatever evil forces we have in this world, the attractions of the physical world, they all will be carried away in dust in no time. But if we are grounded in our Lord Jesus Christ, we would live with him forever. So all the testing times, we will face it boldly. We will be shaken. People will see. You yes, see, this man is praising God, is worshiping God. Now you see his suffering. My brothers and sisters, we should love suffering. We should embrace suffering. We should thank God for the suffering because we trust in the God. God wants always goodness for us. So when He wants goodness, when He wants to transform us, He sends out the sufferings. Through that sufferings, He'll give us the victory. We will learn. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, we are pressed on all sides, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. This is very apt for today's world, like COVID-19 pandemic. Just imagine how many of us are not having enough work and we are just struggling to meet the ends. So we are pressed from all sides. We need to pay all those bills, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed. We are confused, but not in despair. We still praise God. We still enjoy with our family. We still consume the Holy Eucharist and be with him and keep proclaiming the word of God with all those difficulties. So and this second Corinthians chapter four, verse eight, is great for this moment. We are pressed on all sides, but not crushed. So that's the faith and that's the hope we will have. Now in Psalm 93 verse 5, Your statues, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. So my brothers and sisters, if we follow the laws and the commandments of our Creator God, and if we remain holy in front of his eyes, if we are pleasing to him, whatever may come in our present time, the tests, the tribulations and the temptations, our holiness will adorn the kingdom always. Because we are, God is holy, we can become holy. By constantly following his commandments, by constantly acknowledging his magnanimity, his awesomeness, his providence, his compassion. And the same thing we share with our fellow human beings. Now, Psalm 119, verse 89. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in all heavens Psalm 119 89 your word Lord is eternal it stands firm in the heaven the word of God is Lord Jesus in the beginning there was the word and the word was God and the word became flesh and that's Jesus Christ so when we have the word of God which stands firm in heaven we see that Jesus was raised up from his death. He resurrected and appeared to so many people over a period of time, those 40 days. And then he sends the advocate, the Holy Spirit, to be with us, to guide us, to give us the strength, to give that belief, that clinging to his word, that I have overcome this word. So we will also cling to the word, cling to Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit and overcome this world. So whatever tests 
whatever temptations, whatever tribulations, we will be shaken, but we will not be forsaken. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter, 50, chapter 15 verse 58, do not be moved, always be outstanding in the work of the Lord. As any labor you put in the Lord is not in vain. So my brothers and sisters, whatever we spend, the amount of time we spend with our Lord, immersing ourselves in the scriptures is not going to be in vain. I'm sure there are some people, even the richest people, they think, oh, every second I'm making so many dollars. I can't go spend in the church. I can't go spend in the time in silent meditation. I can't do silent adoration. Rather, I will go and make that money. Every second, I am making so many dollars, so many millions. So I don't want to go spend two hours in the church or two hours in the holy adoration. My brothers and sisters, every minute you spend with the Lord, every second you spend with the Lord, it's equivalent to trillions and trillions of dollars. Because once you establish the relationship with God, once the commitment is made, that the trust and relationship you have established with your Lord Jesus Christ, that's equal. Every second is equal to trillions of dollars. Because what is more important, whether to gain victory for your soul or to perish your soul in this dust? So that's the question we need to ask. We can't carry a single cent from this world when we leave away. When our breath is taken away, we are gone. So we got to see how every cent, cent by cent, we can add our spiritual wealth. My brothers and sisters, if you are comparing to the physical wealth, spending one second, one minute with the Lord is equivalent to trillions of dollars. So, during all the testing times, all the tribulation times, all the times of failure, let's cling on to our Creator God, Lord Jesus Christ, who is the rock on which we will be based so that no storm can disturb us and no flood can disrupt us. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. We are all tested, but we are never forsaken. Bye now.